State aid. First of all, what is it? Well, essentially, state aid is where the government can step in and help to subsidise an industry. For example, the steel industry at the moment is looking to move to a carbon neutral future. And especially if it wants to survive in any future scenario, our UK steel industry needs to move to that way, to produce carbon neutral steel. But in order to do that, it needs hundreds of thousands of pounds of investment. And it's something that, again, these industries and companies simply cannot do alone. It needs state help. Not only to help uh, get to these new processes, but also to help cover potential areas where it might not be profitable to go forward and start moving with these this stuff at the moment. So it needs the state intervention to come in and, ha and aid them. That's one. The other that we see in the past is sometimes the government will come in and will help pay a transport cost. So it will go, okay, um, this industry wants to, um, you know, we want to help help this industry by helping to lower their costs so that they can spend money in other areas. So we are going to help subsidise their travel costs. So you might see them maybe go, well, the government will pay about 50% of your travel costs or maybe it'll pay all of it to help, you know, transport maybe heavy goods or large amounts of equipment uh, up and down the country. Or it may even help to get stuff to ports where they will then pay the full price to... Um, well, the, the company will then pay the full price to essentially ship uh, the goods overseas. That is tend that is essentially what state aid is. But one of the big questions of uh, state aid was that, yes, we could do it in the EU. We only just had to go and ask the EU, can we do this state aid? And again, we never got turned down for any of this state aid, which, again, the Brexiteers said that, again, we would. And again, somehow imperiled our sovereignty. But the direction that we are trying to go for our economy, at least the, again, the Brexiteers and the free market fundamentalists are trying to go for this full sovereignty economic model. And again, there is only one country in the entire world which does that, and that's North Korea. Again, doesn't really, it's not really working out for them, to be honest. So before we jump, do jump into that, Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me A Coffee, where you can always buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support me that way. So, this comes from The Guardian, and the title is State Aid Subsidies. Brussels was not the problem. So, the purpose of Brexit is summarised by its advocates in a single word, sovereignty. In practice, that means the power to enact laws that the European Union membership uh, would forbid, with the exception of border control, and the Leave campaign avoided spelling out what those legal depart uh, uh, departures actually might be. And this picture is finally coming into focus. On Wednesday, the government described the outline for a system of industrial subsidies. These rules will replace the state aid regime by which Brussels enforced a level economic playing field between its member states. The theory is that a nimble, proactive state can make strategic interventions to, stop, to, to, uh, to support up-and-coming sectors by enhancing British competitiveness. In practice, it is unclear what a new subsidy regime can actually achieve that was not already unavailable before, nor whether national new freedoms can now compensate for disruptions to trade flows and supply chains caused by an exit from the single market and the specifics of what will be permitted have still not yet been published. But the general concept is said to be an, an adherence to a set of UK-wide principles, not red tape. That woolly description will not survive the legislative process. Companies seeking to help and officials, uh, and officials uh, granting it will need to know whether decisions will later be challenged in court. Even when regulations are actually known, there will be divisions, and especially in the Conservative Party, about their purpose. 
Tory Euroscepticism has historically targeted Brussels rules on the ground that they represent too much intervention in the economy, not too little. Advocates of that model make very unhappy converts um, to what they fear will become a 1970s style uh, of st 1970s style strategy of picking industrial winners from Whitehall. Boris Johnson is said to be a true believer in state activism, which he sees as a tool for his social and economic levelling up agenda, although that confesses different functions for subsidies. It can accelerate the growth of dynamic business or prop up failing ones, and it would be politically convenient if, a worth, if worthy recipients were all located in areas of so social deprivation, but this simply cannot be guaranteed. This points to the bigger question hanging over Brexit. How drastic a departure will it really be away from the way Britain's economy has been run? The revealing case study is proved by the automotive sector, which offered a single uh, out as a, a suitable beneficiary for political support. Car, ma car makers are currently lobbying governments around the world for help effectively to try and transform from fossil fuels to electricity. This week, Nissan is expected to announce plans to locate a battery, a gigafactory, it said, in Sunderland, a move that ministers will hail as a vote of confidence in Brexit Britain. That will be a significant step forward for the UK in terms of electric vehicle infrastructure, but it is still well lags behind that of Germany and the US. Britain also trails behind in similarly sized European markets when it comes to supporting consumers in switching away from petrol engines whether through grants to purchase new vehicles or by installing charge points. On both measures, France and Germany are well ahead, and they have managed to achieve uh, uh, manage this advantage without leaving the EU. The Brussels rules were never the obstacle to British industrial underperformance, so there is no reason to suppose that even scrapping them will automatically fix, uh, fix it. And the governments that invest in the workforce and thinks for the long term strategic horizon are as every bit as important. And again, our government thinking long term. <laughs> yeah, not likely. But that is not in the spirit in which Brexit was enacted by the prime minister, who seems only short term political points to be scored. Britain will have to make the most of the economic life outside the EU. And there will be opportunities alongside severe costs. But it will be hard for a government to know what they are uh, to actually capitalise on when the diagnosis uh, and the discussions begin. With the fiction that a shortage of sovereignty was ever the problem. And again, um, these decisions are going to affect us for some, some time to come. And like I say, the idea that you know, enacting these regulations and subsidies was never, you know, it was never the problem. And of course, we've seen that from the Eurosceptics. That's the why they hated the EU so much. It was, oh my God, so too much state intervention, too much state intervention. You know, but Boris Johnson's entire leveling up campaign, if, if again, if, the, if we are to actually believe that there is to be one, will have to have some significant state intervention. But this goes completely against the idea of global Britain. Because when you sign international trade deals, you might find that that industry that you've just subsidised, that country might go, well, we don't want cheap imports flowing into our country, so we're going to put limits or even more tariffs on your steel. You know... <laughs> Again, the world of international, you know, economics and trade is very complicated. So as we've said before, the more that they push for this global Britain idea, the more it undermines the levelling up agenda. And the more that they try and push the levelling up agenda, the more they break the idea for a global Britain. Like I say, the idea for this new economic econ economy based on sovereignty is going to be completely, you know, bonkers. But the idea that they're starting from this fiction that the Britain never had enough sovereignty. <laughs> my word, those those conversations are going to be something to behold. But 
as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as one of donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can always buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.